Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. We're excited to have with us today a remarkable woman who is uh, building a platform to help people collaborate to save water. And I'm not talking about conservation in the simple run your water uh, less, but we're going to actually save our waterways uh, working with Lisa's program. Lisa Adams is an associate professor at Kennesaw State University and has launched a data site for crowdsourcing this kind of data and collaboration around water called Splash. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Devin. I'm excited to be here. Well, we're, we're far more excited to have you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Splash is and how you envision people using it. Well, Splash is a social platform about water. It will be socially driven and organic in nature so that it will grow really with the users and it encompasses all parts of water, all aspects of water. It's just not about water quality. It could be about fish or it could be about plants in the water. It could be about the flow of the water or pollution. It's for everyone, and it's for students, it's for professors, it's for researchers, it's really about citizen scientists, and it's about your neighbor next door that may want to know about the algae bloom on a lake in their neighborhood. It really sounds like this has tremendous potential to advance water science and not only water science, but also the water action, water conservation. Uh, what motivated you to launch this effort? Well, I've been teaching at the university level for a long time, and I've seen so many projects that students have done on water, and I've even taught high school for a few years, and I saw some great research done about water, but most of that information's lost or recycled, to get something published as a student or as a citizen scientist, you need um, a, a long time and a lot of effort. And so these snapshots are really missing. And so I thought it would be great to start a platform where we could tap into this information and really capture a lot of valuable information about our waterways. I wonder if you could give us two examples, uh, just from your memory. One example of high quality university research that might end up uh, on your platform as well as an example of a high school or kind of citizen scientist kind of observation that might also end up there. I, I want you to compare and contrast to help us see the spectrum of projects that you think can end up on the, pro on the site. Well, I can envision a high school environmental science class that maybe has access to a body of water and they are doing a unit on water where they could be looking at dissolved oxygen and pH levels and maybe they spend a month on that project or you could even have a high school that does that monthly and you could have a year-long study. And so that could be entered as a project as either a snapshot project or a continuing project on Splash, or you can compare that to, let's say, somebody who's doing an independent study at the university level, and they're doing fish tissue analysis in a neighboring creek, and they found some contaminant that was not known to be in that creek and they could post a snapshot of what they have done and what they have found and what that allows us to do is maybe have a person that has more information about that reach out to that person or that person just post that mark on the body of water itself which is reactive and marked and geolocated instantly on the splash site and it starts the network it can contact people who have information to people who have resources or inf people that have questions to people who have resources. Now I know the site is new but do you have some data there now? We do. We launched three weeks ago as of Monday and we launched we, right now we have 16 projects and we have four states in the US. We have California, we have Georgia, we have Florida and North Carolina and they vary, projects vary from, there's an outreach algae project that somebody from Scripps posted 
there is a project that's led by middle school students in North Carolina, a water quality project. There's water quality projects in Georgia, of course, for me. And then in Florida, there is a coral project. Then we have some countries involved. We have Canada. They are looking at an ocean acidification project with bivalves in the sediments, a PhD project. And we have China, and we have Spain, and we had a reach out this morning from somebody who's leaving for Nepal to teach there, and he wants to start a water project. So it's growing. It grows almost every day. I get very excited each time I see a new project added. So I'm hoping for more. Now, are most of the people who are posting projects people who are already in your network, or are you already seeing people you don't know posting projects? A few have been people I've met. I have to be honest about that. And then the one in Spain and China and in Canada um, are people that just found us. Wonderful. And I think, let's see, the one in Florida was somebody that just found us. So I think we're gaining ground. I did reach out to a few people say, what do you think about this? And the algae group I met um, at Scripps uh, a couple months ago. And so it was great that they, they wanted to get involved. Well, this is exciting, and, and clearly, if you're seeing already people from around the globe uh, finding and discovering this platform, it certainly seems to be fitting, uh, filling a gap. What, what were people doing before you created Splash to facilitate this kind of collaboration? Well, there, there are certain sites that are wonderful sites, like Adopt-A-Stream. For example, Adopt-A-Stream is in Georgia with, under the EPD. And what that allows students and citizen scientists to um, monitor their waterways, it takes a commitment, it takes training, and they want their data entered in a very um, strict manner, which is wonderful. It's great quality control and a wonderful program. However, Splash really is much more, and it doesn't require training, and it doesn't require a commitment, and it can be a snapshot from a project or it could be an observation. You could be surfing off of Southern California and see some raw sewage coming into the waterways and want to report it and start engaging people in that way. I just had somebody contact me about they wanted to get Lake Raven on the map in Georgia and how, how can I get a water monitoring project going. And so it, it, what it's going to do is engage people and get the discussion going. So there are sites that focus on particular small, not small, um, narrow efforts, but Splash is very organic in nature in that it can grow with the users, with the interests of the users, and that's what's really powerful. Could it be helpful in a situation like the BP disaster for gathering data from wildly disparate sources on a vast waterway like the, the Gulf of Mexico? Yes, it, it could definitely be used. Right now, our first phase, we won't host data. Um, our first phase is going to reference data. To host data, you need money, and I would love to have some. Um, but that could be a future phase, maybe phase three. Our first phase is talking about the project, getting people to comment on it. It's once you post a project, you can have comments back and forth. And somebody could say, wow, that's really cool. Can you give me more information? And then they give you a website. Um, so probably data hosting will be later, but it would definitely be a resource and a network and a fast way to connect because it's, it's reactive. It's in real time. What, uh, what is phase two? Phase two, if we, get, if we reach our goal on experiment.com, um, which is a crowdfunding site that we're trying to raise about $3,000 for it would be a gamification feature and um, in part to send one of the team members, which would be me, to present at AGU about Splash. And AGU is a conference and I would present at the Citizen Scientist track. And two thirds of the funds would go to, to work on developing this gamification feature. So for people who drink beer, you probably might have earned a beer badge. Or if you're popular on Facebook, you may have earned 20 likes for a comment. Or 
um, for gamers or for Mario Kart, so you can earn stars in different levels. So gamification is a way to reward users and to get them to come back. It's really to acknowledge their, their um, involvement with your program. Tell us more about your crowdfunding campaign. You're trying to raise money, you say, for this phase two. Uh, how much money do you need, and where do people go if they want to contribute? Well, thank you for asking, Devin. Um, it's at experiment.com, and it's a Kickstarter program for science. And we were advised to start low, and so I think our goal is 3025 and right now we are at... 1,371, which is 49% if my math isn't wrong. We have 13 donors and we have six days or five days left. What the scary part of that is if we don't raise it all, we don't get any of it. So I'm, I'm hoping we get some donations and it goes to, you can see it, that it's very transparent on where the funds go. If you go to their site, just look for Splash with two S's. And it's also under the ecology and education track. You say splash with two S's. I think there are three. S P L A S S H. Is that what you think? Yes, you are right. Maybe we no. should think of a new. Uh, a, yeah, a new I have. Track. I don't have the education you have, but I can count. You're right. <laughs> that was a really good observation. No, I'm just teasing you, but I think it's uh, important for people to know how to spell that because we want people to be able to find it uh, wherever they look for it. And Thank you. spelling that correctly is key. So uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Is there anything else you want to share with us before we wrap up? Well, I want to give a shout out to my Splash team, if I may. Please. Um, it's a small team, but we're growing. There's myself. I don't have to look down at notes for that one. Um, my co-founder, Robert Persaud, and he is the lead developer and arc web architect. His wife recently joined, Alicia Persaud, and Saleh Hamada is our software engineer. Uh, Danielle Adams started with us for graphic design, and we have a new member we're real excited about, Channel Grant, who will be our chief creative officer. I want to thank Kennesaw for helping me with that little video you'll find on experiment.com. It may not win any awards, but you'll see a lot of my students there. I want to thank the Adams Lab at Kennesaw and all my students there, and the KSU OBPR Award, and we have our first external sponsor, and I'm very excited about that, which is YSI Inc., and they are a big water vendor, and they are our first sponsor, and their logo's on our site. Terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today and wish you every success in the work that you're doing. Thank you, Devin. We really appreciate it, too. All righty. Let's do some good. Thank you. Let's. <laughs>